I I read somewhere uh, I was reading a scientific paper, and so basically the story goes that these scientists were out um, trying to study consciousness in humans and this kind of stuff. So they took all their instruments out to Tibet or India. They were moving around, and uh, that they were doing all this stuff, and then they were sitting there noticing as they were going from temple to temple that there was basil planted all around these temples in this area, and that it, the actual strain is called sacred basil or holy basil, but that they started to take out their little aura meters, is what, you know, pretty much they were, and that they actually measured it, and that one plant of this basil, you know, which is just a normal basil plant that you can eat, like, tastes like basil, is, produces the equivalent of an average Tibetan monk that they met, that they tested to be five times stronger positive energy being put out in that in their auric in their auric field, and it, that it was also in the same likelihood five times bigger, you know, than the average person who they tested. And I just have have you studied much in that area or anything or heard anything? Like uh, I haven't. The, the kind of basil you're talking about, uh, Tulsi is the name that it is given in South Asia. Tulsi. Tulsi, T-U-L-S-I. And there's several different uh, varieties of it. I had a, a couple of plants myself. But I, it's something that you know, I have just this kind of bookish knowledge. Of, I've seen them, but I don't have direct experience with them, nor have I come across any of this yeah. experimentation. But for some reason, they're regarded as uh, a kind of a holy plant. Yeah. So maybe there is some properties. Because often there's reasons behind these things. Well, I've also um, done some... I'm very much science-based in the way that I ground my spirituality, but, and um, I've been, like, for one thing, like, you know, Stonehenge, they have all these stone pillars, and the pyramids were made out of stone. That stone has a way of concentrating consciousness energy or astral energy, etheric energy, whatever you want to say, so that you can actually kind of localize it in your life, and that it's certain places that they would actually have pillars along the sides of the roads going into the city to help promote peace and prosperity in the city to help I mean because if you're if the whole point of meditating is to get aligned with consciousness energy and you have twice as much of that consciousness energy being focused in a spot it seems that it's that much easier to get alignment and so the foundation for that question with the with that is is trying to create a sacred space in that way so that you have plants helping co-create that environment and I was trying to find specific plants or whatever specific types of plants that help to build up the sacred um, space in the environment or, and also with this you could probably you're probably familiar with how to create sacred space, and I'd like to hear what you have to say on that. Well, yeah, you've touched upon a, uh, something that's been at the core of my project here. I used to give my meditation classes at LCC, University of Oregon, and other places. I'd typically be in uh, these rectangular rooms made out of cement block, slab cement, slab floors, uh, the hum of the heating, air conditioning, ducts going on, and uh, people had some experience, but I was aware that that experience was limited by the space that they were in. So when the Starmalaya property, when we were able to get it, our, our initial project was to build this building. My focus then was to create there were several focuses. One was to create a space that modeled a sustainable way of living, but also a space that energetically would feel uplifting. 
to people. Uh, I don't have sophisticated background in that area. You'll see that the main meeting space is a softened octagon. An octagon approximates a circle. A circular space is a very nice space for meetings, for people being together in community. There is a vaulted ceiling, that kind of thing that's typically used. Uh, there was use of, throughout, of natural materials. It has an organic feel to it because of that. That also contributes. It is a bit up on a platform. There's a feeling of floating a bit. So a few things we were able to do. Uh, and then I began to turn my attention more to developing the grounds, permaculture landscaping. But this became such a popular space, in part, I believe, though I cannot uh, credit in any in any empirical way because of the energetics of it. But I've seen many a time when people come in off the street, they've come through the doors, maybe two, three people together, busily talking, and then there's just a silence that they would shift into. You could see, they may not be consciously aware, but energetically, they felt something. So my focus was then gonna go to uh, development of the grounds and get more into the kind of uh, approaches that you're mentioning. But it became so popular, it became need to then build a bathhouse. And then there became need for a dormitory space, and then a kitchen space, and then another uh, dormitory space over here. So that, that kind of infrastructure, infrastructural work has uh, preoccupied me. And I've not been able to really focus in on as much as I'd like on the, uh, the landscaping, the work with the plants. I have a master plan for it, but I haven't been able to implement it. I got a couple of world-class permaculture designers. I put more money into the design of the grounds, the permaculture design of the grounds, than I put into the architectural fees and engineering fees of the building. Because I know I've spent, I've watched every every permaculture video I could find, and I've watched like hundreds of hours of permaculture videos and design stuff, and there just really isn't a comparison. I think mean, because you're consciously creating an ecosystem. Yeah. It takes tremendous uh, breadth of mind. And I, I, I always find that it really helps to almost get in the, trying to meditate to get into the shoes of the plants that you're planting. I mean, because like, this was the first year that I'd ever planted sweet potatoes. And uh, so I just did lots of research and all this kind of stuff, and it was trying to find the right kind of guild and stuff to put them in, and I, it, they worked really nice because I planted them uh, with tomatoes and onions, so that, the, the vines covered everywhere and did all that kind of stuff, but you know, the, the tomatoes were rotting by the time that the, you know, because it was cold outside by the time we went to go and dig it up so we weren't disturbing the roots of the tomato plants mm -hmm. even. And it, I it, from a science aspect, from a spiritual aspect, from every aspect, it's just so exciting to do that kind of engineering system like this. You're, you're, opening, uh, you're opening new ground. <laughs> it's a pioneering activity that you're engaged in. I, I, but one that has importance. Yeah. 